you know, there's there's a lot of conversation right now from coming from the Biden administration about how their <laughs> FDR sit down, no pun intended, <laughs> stand down FDR. We we are better than you. Our legacy in 66 days is already better than your entire legacy of three terms. What on earth are they thinking? Well, you know, the worst thing is it, 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 it would be bad enough if only the Biden folks celebrated themselves. But it's that writers in places like the New York Times, both columnists and journalists alike, it seems, and in other places, though not universally, but in all too many places, they're talking as if, as if Biden is not simply the, the resurrection of FDR, or in the domestic sense, the resurrection of LBJ, but we can leave that for a moment, but that somehow he's gone further than FDR had gone. I mean, it's in one sense, the historian in me says, you know, are these people have no sense of history? Do they really know so little? But they actually word their pieces. I mean, this included not simply the like say of, I guess it was David Brooks, so we can expect such foolishness from, but, but the long time, though now former, but the long time labor journalist for the New York Times, Stephen Greenhouse, yeah. the other day in talking about presidents and labor, um, rightly quoted a friend of mine, uh, Joe McCartan at Georgetown University about FDR being the, the friendliest of presidents to labor, but then went on to say, and I wanna get the words right, went on to say, still at times, FDR's administration deeply disappointed labor, but gives no example whatsoever. And then on the very next page says, I got to quote it, Roosevelt often pursued the interests of big business. He great, despite the fact, he greatly expanded workers' rights, blah, blah, blah. The point is that even when, even when they want to say something reasonable, they somehow have to do it. They have to smack FDR, and it's over and over again. It really is the case. And I, well, wait, I actually have a whole pile of stuff. Wait, but, but isn't that a strategy? Aren't they like, okay, well, if we're all going to use FDR as our reference point, then aren't they, they, they are trying to make him seem obviously more, uh, I mean, I guess neoliberal or, or however you want to justify it for, for that era, more pro-business uh, so that when Biden is pro-business, he's like, oh, you know, FDR was too. Yeah, well, and, and I'll just, I, I won't leave this question of labor, but I've got to point out today in the New York Times, a writer, a longtime writer and, and book writer and even columnist for the New York Times, Thomas Edsel, mm -hmm. who I recall back in the, I think it was in the 90s, maybe even deeper, was a really progressive writer, really challenging the, the sort of corporate Washington DC status quo. And, and he does write some good pieces, but today, Today, and I've got, I got in a few arguments with people today as an example of just how eager everyone is to jump on the Biden Democratic Party bandwagon to the point where they're even willing to literally use words that don't apply. He wrote in a piece called Biden wants no part of the culture war the GOP loves. And first he says, according to a rundown by the Center for American Progress of the COVID bills, exceptionally, <laughs> gener well, say, yeah, exceptionally generous provisions. I mean, you know, they're setting it up. They're setting it up. <laughs> so you, you can imagine McConnell. Let's take, let's, let's suppose I'm yeah, a Republican. I've just read up. the seemingly progressive Thomas Edsel. And I say, and I remember this. So next week when I come after Biden, I say, don't you think the COVID relief bill was generous enough? I mean, mm -hmm. they're already, it's as if they're so eager to celebrate the Biden bill, which, by the way, is, a, is wonderful in many respects, that they go overboard in a fashion that will turn the COVID bill, and I'll come back to it in just a second, into almost like this great charity measure on the part of the Biden administration for working people, okay? Because now we come to the next thing, and this is the thing that bugs me no end. It bugged me about the Obamacare question. It bugged me when Obama was running for president, and we all know what his presidency entailed. But crucially, the benefits are universal. Well, the benefits are not universal in the COVID relief bill. They are specifically means tested. Right. Okay. Now, people might say, well, it's almost universal. It's like 85%. The point is, it is either universal or, or it's not universal. Okay, now to come back 
to the labor stuff, it's the case that this is really important. I asked the other day on Twitter, I, I know I sent this to you. So let's see now, you think Biden will do to Amazon, okay, will do to Amazon. Let's suppose the, the workers vote for the union, mm -hmm. okay? Let's assume that. It doesn't mean that Amazon will necessarily negotiate in good faith. Right, exactly. I mean, that, that's, that's important. That's the next step, yeah. I mean, they have, you know, all these companies, well, not Amazon, they never recognize the union, but they may say, yeah, we recognize the union. And then they spend a year or yeah. more to the point where workers themselves become, you know, like, Exhausted. Really got us nothing, okay? Right, I mean, right. Where, where are we? So back in 1944, during the war, Montgomery Ward was headed, there, there was a chain store, big company, and, and also a manufacturer of, of many an item, headed by a man named Sewell Avery. And I will note that in 1934, 10 years earlier, Sewell Avery joined with the other half a dozen wealthiest men in America, Mm -hmm. to launch something called, and I think this came up also when you had Tom Frank on, the American Liberty League, which right. I wrote about in my Four Freedoms book. The American Liberty League was going, went out of its way to try to bring down the Roosevelt administration, either at the elections of 34 or, or as they projected at the election of 30. They failed and they spent millions trying to do it. But these people hated FDR. And as he later said, I welcome their hatred. Well, now it's 10 years later, it's 1944. Sewell Avery over and over again refused to recognize his workers' desire for a union. Hmm. And according to, to the wartime regulations, that was utterly unacceptable. Okay, on top of the fact the National Labor Relations Board had already said you, you, you must do it. So FDR, maybe in part revenge, but what, for whatever reason, he literally ordered American troops into the Montgomery Ward headquarters. Whoa. And they, and they arrested. Oh my Sewell goodness. Avery. And there's a famous photo on the cover of, of the newspapers of the day of two GIs carrying Avery out, still <laughs> sitting in the chair because he refused to stand up. Now, the story, if you leave it there, seems like a major victory for FDR because my God, he showed- That's he, amazing. He, yeah. Now, what happened was apparently when he got, was taken to, to, to prison, he, he went to jail. The fact was that apparently he had some deal with the jailers. The jailers were letting him call in his orders to the company in spite of the fact he was no longer supposed to be the head of the company that <laughs> the US had taken it over. So this was becoming something of an embarrassment to FDR because everyone should realize newspaper publishers did not like FDR, mm -hmm. okay? They did not like him. So they were running these pieces about what an embarrassment for FDR because Sewell Avery is still heading up the company. So FDR said, OK, wait a second. I'm going to I'm going to order that the workers vote now. You want the union or do you not? And they voted yes. OK, which automatically shut up all of the all of these publishers. OK, now the question is, let's suppose let's suppose they vote for the union. And mm -hmm. Amazon screws around, right? Well, Biden's already said, you know, it's not legal to, you know, to, it's not legal to do certain kinds of things. And I'm trying to imagine Biden, in order to live up to, <laughs> this is not going to happen, <laughs> trying to live up to FDR by, you know, send, nationalizing the, you know, it, what do they call federalizing the National Guard in Alabama and sending them into the Amazon warehouse. Yeah. Or maybe, I don't know if he's still officially the executive in charge oh, no, of any not. fashion business. Oh, I wonder if that's why he stepped down. He was like, oh, fact, he might he arrest wonder, me. <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be a great- I'm sure interview? that's it. <laughs> and, but, or how about this? And the troops carrying him in, carry him into the Senate Budget Committee hearing so Bernie <laughs> can interrogate Bernie. him properly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can fantasize, Harvey, but <laughs> the reality <laughs> is, is you got to let the process play out. Like it's his favorite phrase, process, 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 my God. Yeah, right. Um, that was a great clip you played of Bernie. I, I just love the guy. God, I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when you when someone doesn't show up to a debate, you have two candidates and one of the can or doesn't show up and you still ask them the questions. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, OK, so why is it, it, it clearly this is a this is a messaging strategy. Someone has issued these talking points um, or done phone calls with reporters to say, you know, we've actually been more progressive. We've done more than FDR did in his entire three terms. Um, I mean, it's so preposterous. It's so yes. ridiculous on, on the surface. And I just, 
I don't understand how this is continuing to be like it's just it's over and over again yes it, it's yeah over and over again um i i mean it, it, I, my only thought is it's step one in 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 setting up a situation in which they can say well no even your like well like we said uh even your your hero fdr uh aligned with business on these occasions but i mean okay so so there's the labor standard the pro act for instance um it's it's a fantastic piece of legislation. Absolutely needs to happen. Uh, Biden is is supporting it. That is something that they can hold true and say yes. If this is passed, if Biden, you know, puts on his Johnson hat, his LBJ hat, uh, and and pushes Mansion and Cinema and any other bad actors in the Demo- Democratic Party, in the Senate to um, to step up, then. Okay, then then they can claim the victory. But what are they claiming is the victory right now? What are they claiming that they've achieved? Right. Well, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting point because of this. I mean, if we look, at, I'm going to play the historian now for a moment. If, if we look at the FDR years, the FDR presidency from 1933 until not his passing in 1945, elected to the presidency four times. Okay, four times. That if his first and his initial actions the first hundred days became renowned and he they became renowned because immediately fdr stepped in to literally close the banks to make sure they could reopen and by the way people had such confidence in fdr that when the banks reopened some days later more money went back into the banks than had than, wow. than had yeah so but okay the other thing is that he signed into law the national um, Industrial Recovery Act, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, this ho- major series of acts. They created the Civilian Conservation Corps. They signed into law the creation of the works, no, the D- PWA, the Public Works Administration, which would take about two years to get going, really, because it was huge projects and they did not want to be involved in any kind of corrupt practices. Well, the key thing is this. Everyone remembers the national, well, not everyone, but people who bother to pay attention usually remember the National Labor Relations Act. And the reason they do is even now, even now Biden's first move on that first day in his, after his inaugural address was delivered was to throw out Peter Robbie, Peter Robs, I'm forgetting the name, yeah. something like that, who was this lawyer who was, dis- who was definitely lined up with Trump as he was with Reagan years ago, very anti labor. And the idea they threw him out as a sign that uh, they were going to commit to the labor movement. Well, what FDR did when he signed into law the National Industrial Recovery Act, not simply, he didn't just literally talk about it, he signs into law something that included the right. For, of workers to organize. That's in 1933. Everyone forgets this. It's as if later he mm-hmm. gets around to it. No, right away in the first hundred days. And that included, moreover, the first attempt on the part of a, a federal law to create a minimum wage, okay, which was, which was really crucial. And when he signed it, FDR, giving sub signal as to where he was going, said no country, sorry, I do that all the time, no company should be allowed to operate in the United States that does not pay a living wage. Now, what happened was the corporations found their way around the law on this occasion. But I do want you to know that two million plus workers stormed, not stormed, but, you know, sort of marched. You can't say that anymore. (laughs) Yeah, right. They marched into the labor movement. Almost overnight, the labor movement grew by, you know, two million And then in 1934, there were general strikes around the United States, empowered by workers' desire to be organized and to be recognized, okay? Then in 1935, FDR is encouraged enough by by labor's push and also by his friend, Senator Robert Wagner of New York State, to sign into law the National Labor Relations Act. And that wasn't simply workers have the right to organize, they created the board to make sure the government would stand behind workers' efforts to do so. Now, the Biden statement back what, two weeks ago or so, mm-hmm. his little video for Twitter or something like that, where he said basically workers have the right to organize, mm-hmm. you can't mess with them and so on, was a really important step. And I think that the question is to what extent he follows up. And of course, the biggest question is, if, are they going to do what needs to be done to pass not only the re-securing of voting rights, but the PRO Act, right? Right. The Protection of the Right to Organize Act. And there, 
And they wouldn't need to say F, that Biden's gone beyond FDR. What is this? This is like mine is bigger than yours kind of thing. That's crazy. All they need to say is Biden has stood in the tradition of FDR. That's all they got to do. I, right. Why belittle the, the greatest president of the 20th century to score points, right? Well, I mean, it sounds very classic cap strategy, strangely enough, is pitting yeah, one against another. It's a very strange messaging yeah. technique. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.